Hi, Good Life Travelers. Tamara here with a new series we're, we're starting called Travel Talk with an Expert. And I am here today with Dominic San Santoriga. Did I say that right? Yes, Dominic Santoriga, yes. Dominic Santoriga from Nature Horizons Tours, which is a tour operator that uh, provides safaris and other types of adventure travel uh, all throughout the world. So Dominic is here with me today to talk about the safari experience. I'm very excited. So thank you, Dominic, for being with us today. And no problem. Can you tell me a little bit about Nature Horizons Tours? Absolutely. We are, we're a tour operator company who operates in some of the most amazing places on the planet, but we really focus on wildlife safari. We actually operate in Africa in three places, including the Serengeti, but we're focused on ancient culture, megalithic sites, and wildlife, which is why we're here talking about our Serengeti safari. Yeah, yeah. So a safari is something that a lot of people tell me is on their bucket list. They really want to uh, go on safari, and that means a lot of things to a lot of different, a lot of people, different things to different people. So can you tell me a little bit about your um, why you are interested in uh, taking people to Tanzania? What you what got you started in in safaris? Absolutely, um, I've always been a Discovery Channel kid, a National Geographic kid, watching safari on my TV screen my entire life, until one day I was like, I have to go. So I I made my pilgrimage through Africa, uh getting to the Serengeti and it just was life-changing to actually be on safari. When we go to the Serengeti, we're going for the great migration. So if you've, if you've been watching the National Geographic and you see what we're going for is the great migration and it's the circle of life. Uh, the Serengeti is where the Lion King was based off of. So there's just a lot of beauty and natural beauty and just the circle of life with wildlife just there. It's really surreal to be there. So the fact that I get to bring people there now, uh, that's what I'm excited about to make people's dreams come true and their dreams a reality, you know? Yep. So I've been on a safari in Kenya, not Tanzania, which we're going to talk about Tanzania today. And okay. It's, really, it's life changing going on. So it's very hard to describe because it, it affects you in ways that you're never, you don't even expect. It's it's just so beautiful the the savanna, the the wildlife, the people of Africa. It's it's very hard to put into words um, what that experience is like. I was reading earlier this week that the word safari in Swahili actually means journey, which I think is a perfect word to to describe what that experience is. You're you're taking a journey through the African landscape. So um, I'm very excited to talk more about safaris with you. So, yeah, let's do it. What was your first safari experience like? I remember it like it was yesterday. Although I've been on safari every year since 2017, I remember every single safari. And what was it like? Magical. And I'll tell you why it was magical. Because when we go on a Serengeti safari, we're not just going to the Serengeti. We're bringing you through all of the amazing national parks and landscapes that this Northern Circuit has to offer. So my first safari experience, I was descending down the Ngorogoro Crater. I was going through the Serengeti Plains, but what struck me was my first family of lions. It's always gonna be embedded in my memory. We were going in February, which is actually calving season. And that's when all of the animal species are having their offspring and their babies. So it was 5.30 a.m. The sun just came up. It's dead silence out. And you never know what you're going to, there's no map to safari. You're going to find something different around every single corner and you don't know what that's going to be. But around one of our first morning sunrises, I met my first pride of lions. I had seen two lions, one lion, but I never saw a full pride. There was like 12 babies, eight lionesses, and three male lions in that pride. And to be able to just see that first pride of lions, I'll always remember it. 
but I don't know what I'm going to remember more, you know, the, mm -hmm. the first bull elephant to walk by me or the pride of lions. Every experience on safari is going to be your first. It's going to be filled with firsts. And the next time it's going to be just as memorable. So I get a little passionate and carried away when talking about it, but sure. let's continue on because I'd love to give as much great information as possible. Sure. That's one of the things I love about being on safari too, is you never know what you're going to run into ever. And there's no like real barrier other than your vehicle between you and the wildlife. So you know, my one of my first experiences was coming up against a uh, a pride of lions and they they walked really close to our vehicle they weren't they weren't interested in us but to, to hear them breathe and to feel them move it's just it's it's just magical so yeah. let's talk a little bit about the safari experience in general and uh some of my uh, good life travelers are maybe a little nervous about um going on a safari it's uh it's a little daunting to do that it's not like traveling to europe so how is how easy is it to travel to Africa? Do we need anything in particular to get there? Let me just tell you the ease. First of all, where we're going is Tanzania. And Tanzania is the most welcoming country. They love that people from all over the world are flooding into Tanzania for safari. You know, there's only one great migration in the world. There's safaris all over Africa, you know, Zambia, Botswana, but there's only one great migration. And how easy is it? You don't need any visa, okay? When you fly into Kilimanjaro International Airport, you get your visa on arrival. So, I mean, that's easy peasy right there. And then the only other things that you might want to keep in mind when you're on your way to an African safari is just your health and safety. Uh, there are a few recommended vaccinations that all you do is you go to your healthcare provider, you tell them you're going on a Serengeti safari in Tanzania. They're going to give you their recommendation as uh, as your healthcare provider, and you're going to follow that for your safety. Now, with that being said, there's no mandatory vaccines to get into Tanzania, not one. That's but great. getting off beat, how easy is it? I mean, book your flight. And uh, hop on the flight. We're going to meet you at the airport. And I mean, your adventure starts the second you get off the airplane. Do you need to pack any special clothing? What's the weather like? Uh, we I'm telling you. Okay. If you love safari and you have your own pair of binoculars and you want to bring them, sure thing. We're going to have some binoculars for you there already. As for clothing, okay. Long sleeve, dry fit is going to keep you comfortable, keep the sun off your skin. And if and when there are any mosquitoes or bugs around, you're just going to be protected. So when you're in the safari vehicle, the sun's not beating on you. So, you know, I can get away with the T-shirt. But uh, when you're at your camp in the middle of the day, walking around, having lunch, and you have that direct sun on you, I mean, get your safari hat out, you know, long sleeves, just pack like you're going on a summer hike. Right. Um, safari is going to be a little brisk in the morning, uh, especially in February, January. You're going to enjoy your cup of coffee and it's going to be a little chilly out. But as soon as that sun breaks the horizon, the temperature just rises. It's hot during the day and it's cool during the night. Yes, it can be cool during the night. And uh, a little side note, you will never see more stars in the sky than when you're on safari. It no. is amazing. It, it's yes. hard to even describe that because you can't take a picture of that. It's gorgeous. And the noises and the sounds you hear at, at night, uh, it's wonderful. So um, a safari is one of those trips that I tell my travelers, they really need to have somebody with them, a guide or a driver or both. Um, somebody needs to take care of those details for you because it's not like going to Europe where you can jump on a train and get to the next city. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. And you are the planner. You take care of all of those details for us, which is, it's wonderful for our guests to just hop into your plan. So from the moment they land, kind of describe to me what to expect from you as a tour operator. Sure. This is a tour, you know, we are Nature Horizons Tours and that, the essence of the word tour 
we're bringing you everywhere. You know, we're we're moving. We're bringing you to the most sought after places in the time frame that you have. Now, you're always going to be assisted by a guide. Uh, we are your guides. We are your team. You're never not assisted from the second you get off the airplane. Um, yes, when you're in your hotel rooms at the end of the night, you have all of your privacy and everything, but you are always with your guide. You're always with your team. And that is why your experience is so guided and amazing. It's because yeah. you're being guided by lifelong enthusiasts of the Serengeti. My team on safari is 12 to 15 years experience on safari. And that experience just makes for the most special moments because there's little, there's, there's things my team knows. It's from being in the safari land their entire life. And uh, to answer your question more, you're just taking care of the entire time, okay? We transport you to the hotel in Moshi, and then the next day the safari starts, breakfast, lunch, dinner, at your accommodations while you're on safari, but you're on a guided tour. Really, the only thing left for you to do is show up, sit mm -hmm. back and relax and, and just have the experience. You don't have to worry about where you're walking, what activity to go to next, where you, you wake up, you have a beautiful sunrise safari, you go back to the accommodation for breakfast, stretch, enjoy. And now we're heading out for safari the rest of the day packing our amazing lunch to have while we're parked anywhere we'd like in the safari lands. And then I like to head back to the accommodation at sunset. Then we have our dinner, campfire, go to bed, repeat. You know, that's kind of a day in the safari land, but the main focus is you just relaxing, taking everything in and just experiencing. We have everything planned for you. We take care of your entire experience yep. and we're happy to do so. In, in my experience with our safari, really everyone on the team that takes care of you really wants you to have the best experience. So from the moment you are picked up at the airport to the moment you are dropped off at the airport, that whole team is there for you. They are talking about where the best, with each other about where the best animals are, the best um, thing for you to have for dinner or whatever. It, you're being taken care of and well taken care of the entire time you're on. Can I give you a small little story about just how these guides intuition can bring you to some amazing experiences. We woke up in the morning on safari and my lead guide, pray God, uh, it rained that night. Okay. We heard rain during the night. When we woke up in the morning, pray God said, we have to drive 50 to 60 minutes in this direction, there's going to be a watering hole that collected oh. from the rain we heard last night. I said, oh, let's, let's go. go. Come on. We get there. Water hole just filled up just enough for that rain. Pride Alliance right by oh. it. Zebra right by it. And these are just the little mm -hmm. instinctual bits of knowledge that our team carries with them. And it's, uh, it's like second nature to them. They just oh. know where the amazing places to go are. And yeah. and you would you never know that without a guide. You need a guide. Never know. No, and not, nor, no. Nor would you ever enter Serengeti without a guide. Even if you could, why would you not want to go with the most knowledgeable right. locals there are? You know, it's right. all about your experience. Yep. Yep. I completely agree. So um so what are what should we expect from our safari experience as far as animals go? What kind of things are we going to see? How long are we going to drive during the day? Take us okay. through that. So we're going to plan to see the big five. Rhino, buffalo, elephant, jaguar, cheetah. And uh, the gray migration has 1.5 million wildebeest that circle. And those 1.5 million wildebeest, they go in a continuous circle from the Maasai Mara in Kenya, where you were, down to the Serengeti. Now, when we're on safari, we're always focused on the great migration. We're gonna see a lot of animals, mm -hmm. a lot. You're gonna see, my first worry about going on safari was, ah, I hope I see the animals. I, I hope we can find them. Let me tell you, they are there. 
in uh, vast amounts. Now, in Safari and Serengeti, we're driving and we're always having our eyes peeled. Every time you come around the corner could be a new experience. It could be a family of elephants, uh, springbok, wildebeests. Ostrich, um, elephants. Uh, oh, if you like birds, I didn't consider myself a bird watcher. After I left Safari, the amount of different birds that are there are overwhelming. Now, I agree. In different places, different places we go on Safari. When we go to the Nagorogoro Crater, that's an ecosystem all of its own. The Nagorogoro Crater uh, actually was an ancient volcano that exploded and imploded into itself. Now there's uh, water down there. It takes you six hours to drive through the whole crater. But why I'm telling you this is there's resident game, resident animals that never leave. They don't care about the Great Migration. They have everything they need in the Nagorogoro Crater and they stay right there. Wow. But what we can expect, you're going to see the lions. You're going to see the elephants. You're going to see more bird species than you've probably ever seen in, in a in a in a in a one week period. And they're beautiful. I was shocked at the birds when I went. Quite honestly, they're beautiful. If you are a photographer uh, or an amateur photographer, a new photographer, an old photographer, it really just ignites your passion up again because you're now on the camera with everything you've always been watching on TV. It really is a surreal moment when you're in the lands that you've always just been watching on TV before because they've been there the whole time, just waiting for you to experience it, you know? Yep. And it's it's pristine, untouched mother nature. Yep, totally. So tell me what the camps are like because a lot of people think you're gonna be sleeping on the ground or in a very rustic, basic tent, which you can do, but we're you don't do that, especially with this no. tour that we're doing. In February. Absolutely. So the accommodations when we're on safari, uh, I can't explain in detail all of the accommodations. What I can tell you is if you're interested, you're to reach out to Tamara. She's going to give you the itinerary. You can click the links to the accommodations, but they're amazing. There are tented lodges, and that means they're mobile camps where there is these big tented structures, and it's 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 like a room in a large tent in safari land. Now that's just for your accommodations uh, in certain places. We're going to many different accommodations on this safari. I'd say five. Uh, I think the accommodations couldn't be any more perfect and we picked them because of their location mm -hmm. and the teams of employees that run the camps. You know, we're only bringing you to the camps that we've personally been to. We have a great relationship with the owners of the camps. And it's just like our guides, their only, their only goal is to make sure your every moment of every day is the best. The same thing translates through the entire staff that runs the lodges. Absolutely. Um, I know we only have 45 minutes here. Anybody listening, I I would uh I would encourage you to reach out to Tamara, get that mm -hmm. itinerary. You can see all the accommodations for yourself in full detail. It'll give you a great insight into where we're staying in February. In the camps, the your rooms have in they have plumbing. So you, yes, yeah. yes, that, yes, absolutely. Electricity, Sink, bathroom, plumbing. Yes, yes, full kitchen. You yes. know, they're you've safe. Never, very safe. I'll tell you why you're safe because these lodges and camps have been there for so long and. Just picture your wildlife. Sometimes you might get annoyed with humans. You don't want to smell them. You don't want to be around them. These camps are safe because they've always been there, but not only are they safe because of that, there's rangers and personnel uh, who walk the perimeter of the property 24 seven, including when you're at night. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever wanted to come out of your tent in the middle of the night for any reason, Let's say you wanted to stare at the stars, not through your tent. What you do is you go to the end of your tent. There's going to be a uh, ranger personnel on the property with flashlights. They're yep. going to come over, clear the area, make sure it's safe. And then they're going to assist you with anything mm -hmm. you need. Yep. Um, Safety is number one. And Safari's been in ta Tanzania for over 50 years. 
they've really got the safety down packed to a code of ethics. Yep. Uh, that goes from when you're in your car. You said before, lions will get very close to your car. Absolutely. Uh, the wildlife knows that these safari vehicles and the people in them, they don't affect their life whatsoever. We don't make noises at them, feed them. Uh, we don't even stick our hands out of the car or when the rooftop pops up or where our head is under the rooftop, but we don't stick our hands out. Um, that all just contributes to the, the safety and the code of ethics that's been followed for so long on safari. That's why so many people every day are on safari having an amazing experience with no mishaps. It's just because of uh, the code of ethics. There's a deep respect for the wildlife there from the people of Tanzania and from the visitors that go. And uh, a, a relationship is formed with us and the animals with the, that deep respect. Um, we just leave each other alone. We like to watch, but um, it, yeah. it, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, okay, so let's start talking about the specific trip that um, I will be joining you with you in February. And that is again to Tanzania. And um, we are lucky enough to be going during the time that the great migration is actually in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And as Dominic said, that great migration kind of follows, uh, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Um, it's clockwise. Clockwise uh, path. And uh, it's basically wildebeest, but other animals are following that great migration too. There's about 1.5 million wildebeest, about 400,000 zebra, and a few other stragglers that hop on for the ride. And what they're doing is they're the wildebeest are instinctively going where the rain is going to be next. When they're on their way to the central Serengeti from the north, it's because the rains are dumping on the central Serengeti. It's just honestly an ever continuous circle of right. grazing, you know? And yeah, so looking for food and for clean grasses, really, where they have not already been. So, mm -hmm. it, but uh, when I went on safari, I was in uh, Kenya in the Maasai Mara, which is connected to the Serengeti. I was there in February, which was probably not the best time to be in the Maasai Mara because the Great Migration was in the Serengeti at that point in time. But the reason I say that is because I couldn't believe the animals that were there in the down season of the Maasai yeah. Mara, my guys they stay. Said, Those are the resident game. They yeah, said, but, "We know we don't we don't care about that migration. We're going to stay dead. here." You know. But my guide said during that Great Migration period, which is September in the Maasai Mara, the savanna is black with animals. There are so many animals that it, it, it looks black on the horizon. So there will be a lot in the central Serengeti where we're central Serengeti, right? Where we're heading. And why don't you Absolutely. tell me a little bit about like a, a quick overview of our days, what what our guests can expect to see each day. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm happy to actually go through a day by day. So okay, great. I'm going to give you a quick overview of our February 8th through 19th safari. And anybody listening, you might have uh, been in tune now that we're going on safari and we're going on safari in February of 2024. Day one. February 8th, final day, February 19th. I'm going to bring you through what that safari can look like for you right now. And it's a special safari I put together myself. It's called the 12-Day Tanzania Farmhouse Safari. And here's what it is. I'm actually going to read from this. February 8th, day one, we fly in. I pick you up from Kilimanjaro International Airport. We bring you to your hotel in Moshi, okay? Next day, safari starts. We're going from Moshi to Lake Manyara. Sunset safari into the sunset, sleeping over Lake Manyara that night. That's February 10th, the next day. We're going to wake up with uh, coffee in the morning. We're going to head to the central Serengeti. Safari the whole time. You're just always on safari, but these national parks are spread out in different places. So day one, Moshi, day two, Moshi to Lake Manyara. Day three, we're going Lake Manyara to the central Serengeti. Day four, central Serengeti. And I'll come back to why we have a full day here. Day five of our safari, again, this is now February 12th, central Serengeti all day. February 13th, 
We're now going to head to the Nagorogoro Crater. We're going to go morning sunrise safari, transfer to the Nagorogoro Crater. It's about a four-hour drive. You're going to love every minute of it. And now we're going to sleep over. We're going to sleep over at the Rhino Lodge on the rim of the Nagorogoro Crater. Uh, think back. This is the volcano that exploded on itself, made a big indent. And the next morning is February 14th. We're going to complete our Nagorogoro Crater Safari, literally driving down a mountain. It's just, just getting into the crater is an experience itself. And... I'll uh, I'll keep going on here because I can just keep talking about it for a long time. So we're going to Safari, the Nagorogoro Crater, on the morning of February 14th. And then we're going to head to Tarangiri National Park. Tarangiri National Park along the Tarangiri River, home of some of the largest density populations of elephants there is today in Africa. You'll see why when you get there. And February 15th, we're going to wake up at Tarangiri. Now we're headed to Simba Farm Lodge. Let me tell you about Simba Farm Lodge. It's in the west end of Kilimanjaro. We're going to head there on the 15th. We're going to spend all day on the 16th there. Simba Farm Lodge is probably one of the most beautiful farmhouses in Tanzania. It's just, when you get there, you'll know why. It's in the, the lush farmlands of Kilimanjaro, and it's Sitting under Mount Maru, there's two very big mountains in Tanzania, Mount Maru and Mount Kilimanjaro, and they're always in your sight when you're there. Simba Farm Lodge, I can go for a long time on that, but I'm going to keep going. February 17th, we're leaving Simba Farm Lodge. We're going to do a full day of rest, relax, and explore. We're going to hot springs, waterfalls. I'm going to bring you to some of my friends and family members' homes who I've known since 2017. We're just gonna have a great experience. I might bring you by Nikas Education Center. He's just a selfless man I know who runs a school for 50 children. Uh, you're gonna get the real cultural, the real roots of Moshi and a full rest, relax and explore day on the 17th. On the 18th, now this is the day before your departure. We don't leave any days unused around here. You're leaving on February 19th, but on February 18th, we're going to Makumazi National Park. What's special about Makumazi National Park is there's nine protected rhinos, adult, male and female rhinos. Each rhino is assigned two armed guards 24-7, wow. or else, sadly, poachers would be getting these rhinos for the value of their horns. And... Through conservation, it gives us the opportunity to go to Makumazi National Park, meet with the rangers who guard the rhinos, who know where they are, and we get to drive right up to them, probably from me to three Ford F-150s away, wow. about 40 feet away from the rhinos. And what we do when we're that close, nothing. We sit, we watch, we listen to them breathe these dinosauric animals that are just magnificent to look at and just be in their presence. Uh, this is what mother nature has created. That's what we get to go experience the day before we leave February 19th. Uh, my birthday, actually, I planned this tour around my birthday, February 19th, everybody flies home. Now with that being said, anybody who would like to stay one day later, anybody who would like to arrive one day sooner, you just let Tamara know, and we'll make sure we include that in your itinerary. You know, just because our tour is the 8th to the 19th um, doesn't mean you can't show up on the 7th and leave on the 20th. So we'll take this on a per-person basis. But uh, that's the safari itinerary. Oh, You're coming fun. in calving season. Uh, uh, me personally, I've been there every year since 2017 in January and February. It's a reason why. And that's why I'm hosting this tour there again at the same time of the year. Sounds wonderful. I really cannot wait. Uh, ever since I agreed to do this, I am really, I can't stop thinking about it. I'm so excited. Nice. So, um, one of the reasons I'm really excited about it is I feel like you have really worked hard to connect us to the local people. And I can't say enough how lovely um and welcoming the people of Kenya when I was there, and I'm sure Tanzania as well, are. They love 
people to come experience their their beautiful countries and their wildlife and their lodges and their cities. So you've done a great job of, of giving us opportunities con to connect. And that's, um, you know, there's one thing to go on safari and check the box, but never really connect to the people that live there and hear about um, how they operate their uh, their parks and their homes and their cities. And that's one of the things I really love to learn when I go traveling. So thank you for- um, I can't wait, I can't wait to, to, I can't wait to be the one to uh, lend you a hand in the experience. Great. So if you're interested in joining me and Dominic on this tour, please reach out to me, 419-366-5028, or you can look um, on Facebook. Uh, I have a page called Traveling with Tamara, where I will post information about this. Uh, it'll be on the Good Life Travel Company's uh, website and Facebook page. And um, we would love to help you go on safari with Dominic. Now, if you're not able to join us for this safari, Dominic runs safaris throughout the year. And he also uh, goes to other countries as well. Uh, he goes to Nepal, Botswana, Zambia, um, Peru. I'm trying to think, was Jordan in there too? No, Egypt? No, uh, Egypt, yes. Yeah, so... Uh, and we'll be doing future um, travel talk with an expert on uh, on these topics. But for right now, we're focused on that safari experience. Now, I know there's a limited time for you to for our good life travelers to get in on the safari um, because we have to get unsold in whatever we don't have sold from the safari. The travelers needs to go back to the hotelier so they can release those rooms and give them to somebody else. So there's a very limited time to get in on this one in particular. Um, by the end of August, by August 27th, I think you need to have uh, your information into me so that we can get you into part of that group. And I also know you have limited space. So, um, you know, we there is, yes, people. there is limited space on this one. And, uh, but we still have room for anybody interested. So if, you know, if you're watching this, if you are interested, please do reach out to Tamara. Uh, time is of the essence we would never want you to want to join and then the spots be filled up. Right. Uh, and I think a final note would be, if you can't make this February 8th to the 19th safari, uh, reach out to Tamara. We're going to set you up with your own personal safari mm -hmm. at a time that's best for you. We'll guide you on when is best, but let's focus on getting you there in February. Yeah, because th th that time of year is going to be just amazing. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Dominic, about this experience? I think if you if you're a traveler and you've you've been accustomed to other parts of the world, you've never stepped foot in Africa, you've always been elsewhere, well, now's the time, you know. Yeah. I don't think not I don't think that's totally wrong. I know you'll never regret it. I actually know it's going to be one of the most amazing experiences you've ever had in your life and yeah. uh through experience, I can just confidently say that yeah. when you finish your Serengeti safari uh, it's a life-changing moment. So it I just really encourage is. anyone who's thinking about it on the fence, just take the jump, you know, you'll never regret it. And uh, we're happy to be here to pick you up from the airport to start your excursion, yep. you know? Yep, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it too. And I think there's a hot air balloon ride in this as well. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. Wish, yes. uh, there's a hot air balloon in this as well. So sorry, we didn't even cover that, but... Uh, not only do we get to explore the safari lands from our safari vehicle, but we are going on a hot air balloon safari where we launch pre-sunrise. You get there uh, about 4.50 a.m. before this first light up. The balloons are getting filled up by the by the gases, and we just float up in the air, you know, and uh, we go with Serengeti balloon safaris. Uh, it's about a one and a half hour flight in the balloon. Wow. After the balloon lands, we land in the bush. We have Serengeti balloon safari set us up an amazing lunch. I apologize, an amazing breakfast that we enjoy in the bush. It's a truly once in a lifetime experience and that's what we're going to do. So uh, if you want to know what any more of these experiences actually look like, reach out to Tamara. We're going to give you some videos. We have great videos of our experiences that we host right from my camera, right from my team's camera. And if you want a deeper dive into what this experience could be like for you, 
make that one of your questions to Tamara. Ask her to yep. send you any videos you have because she'd be happy to do so. Absolutely. So Dominic, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure talking to you about safaris. And uh, if any of our Good Life Travelers would like to join me in February, please reach out to me. Uh, if you would like Dominic to plan your own adventure, either in Tanzania or other parts of the world, please reach out to me as well and we can help get you there. So Dominic, thanks again. Have a no great problem. Day. And I'll see you in February. I'm sure we'll talk before then, but looking forward to I'm sure to I'll it. talk to you tomorrow, but right. I'll see you in February. Talk to you tomorrow. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. See ya. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>